Alright, what is going on guys? Today I'm going to be making another one of my monthly pickups videos. This one, don't really have a whole lot for it, unfortunately. This is kind of a slow month for me. Uh, I've had kind of just a lot going on. I... Didn't buy a lot this month, but I do have something pretty big coming next month. It's a package from Japan. I bought a bunch of really cool stuff, so definitely be on the lookout for that. I'm probably going to do a separate video just showing that stuff off. I'm not 100% sure yet, but so far that's what I'm thinking, just because of how much stuff is in there. Also, you guys might be able to notice, or might not, I don't know, but I did get a new phone. So I have a Pixel 9 Pro now. Uh, camera should be a lot clearer You'll be able to see how I how much I've ruined this desk mat. <laughs> I definitely need to get a new one of these just for recording my videos. But yeah, quality should be a little bit better. Uh, when I do some other videos where I'm, you know, more looking at actual stuff or, you know, looking around conventions or things like that, hoping it'll look a lot better. But yeah, anyway, I guess let's just get started with some of the pickups. Like I said, there's not a whole lot this month, but here we go. So first one. I got WarioWare Gold for the 3DS. This one was at GameStop. I usually don't see a lot of 3DS games, and this is one that I didn't have, so I picked it up. Uh, nothing really too crazy. I haven't played WarioWare a whole lot in my life, but I found it pretty enjoyable whenever I have. Next up, I got Ghosts and Goblins for the NES. Uh, this one here, not really anything too crazy. It's just a game that I didn't have. Very difficult game. I've played it on some other platforms. I think I just recently picked it up for Super Nintendo, I think. Or maybe that might have been uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, one of those games that I felt like I should just have. Uh, it was cheap enough that, you know, why not? I was surprised I didn't have it already. So there's that. Got a couple Master System games here because I just really don't find them that often. And uh, these two are kind of the some of the must-haves for the console. So first one I got here is Afterburner. Didn't pay much, 15 bucks for it, and it's complete in box. And then I also got Outrun. So I really don't have a whole lot of good Master System games. When I got the console, I picked up like a whole lot of like 25 games, but there's nothing super crazy on it. I think the best game I've got is like Choplifter, which is a good game, but it's like it's nothing too crazy, so I wanted some other stuff to play on it, because I really never used the console. So now I got two games that are, you know, released on other systems and probably better on those, but at least it's something to, to show the console off with, I guess. Next up, I've got a couple games for a console that I really like, but I just usually don't find games for super often. But some of these are actually from a GameStop, which is pretty cool. Anyway, starting off with the one that's not from GameStop. I got Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles, which is basically like a remake of Rondo of Blood, which is my favorite Castlevania game of all time. Uh, it was exclusive to the PC Engine CD in Japan, so this is kind of the first time we were able to play it over here. And I believe this game also has Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, but yeah, um, this is definitely like one of the, the must-have PSP games if you guys are collecting for the system. Plays pretty much identical to the original, it just has like new 3D graphics, which I'm not a gigantic fan of, but it's not terrible. And like I said, it still plays the same, so it doesn't really matter. Then next up, I got these from GameStop, and I was just really surprised to see them there. That's the only reason why I got them. So first one was Battlefront Renegade Squadron. This was actually a PSP exclusive, although I think it might have been planned for like PS2. I can't remember exactly, but I've heard compared to Battlefront 2, this one is not as good. But it's an exclusive. It's one that I didn't have yet, so for $6.64, sure. And next up, I picked these up because it was in a double pack, which I find really neat. And that is the Kill Zone and Siphon Filter Double Pack. So both the games are in here. They're kind of in their own packages. So yeah, I just always like these double packs. I think they're really cool. So whenever I see them, I usually pick them up. Uh, just a couple months ago, I got that Pac-Man Triple Pack for the PS2. That kind of stuff I just love getting. So even if I already own the games, like I think I already owned Kill Zone. I, I'll still pick them up with this cardboard and then just sell off my extra copy because I think this is a lot cooler. Next up, this one I've been wanting for a really long time. They released it in like this really goofy way originally and it was almost impossible to get a copy. Thankfully, they went through and did a re-release in like retail stores, which is nice because I think the original 
uh, kind of setup for that was terrible. But that is the Final Fantasy 1 through 6 Pixel Remaster. So it's got the first six Final Fantasy games. Obviously, that's the ones in Japan, uh, because over here... I can't remember exactly what it was. I think our Final Fantasy 1 was their Final Fantasy 1. And then, like, the next ones we got were 5 and 6, or something like that. Like, we missed out on a lot of the games over here. So... This is the original six, all obviously translated to English, although those have been done for a while, and uh, all put into one package, which is really cool. So yeah, I've been wanting to play through all the Final Fantasy games, which I know is like a complete, <laughs> a, a, a complete headache to go through. It's going to take me like four years, but I've heard really good things about pretty much all of them, so thought this would be a cool way to, to try out at least the ones that we didn't get over here. I mean, I'll obviously play the Super Nintendo versions of the ones that were released on that. I'll try to play the NES version of the original, but we'll see. Really neat that they finally did a re-release, because paying $400 on eBay to some scalper just was not something I was willing to do. And this is the last game that I got. I got a couple other things here that are, you know, not games. But anyway, this right here is a CDI promo disc for a game called The Apprentice. So The Apprentice is probably the best game on the CDI, uh, if you're a platformer fan at least. I mean, the Zelda games are kind of platformers, but they're not uh, what I would consider good. This game, if it was on any other console, would probably be pretty mediocre, but just because it's on the CDI, it's like actually a very good game in comparison. And an actual, you know, full-on copy was like 50, 60 bucks, and I had to ship it from Europe. But I found this American promo disc for $20 on eBay, so why not? I think this kind of stuff is really cool, even though technically, if you look into it, the promo discs for CDI stuff really aren't that rare. There are probably a couple out there that are hard to find, but generally, if you have a promo disc for like the Zelda games or Hotel Mario or things like that, they'll usually sell for less than just a normal retail copy. But I just think this stuff is cool. I mean, I have promo discs for like the PS4 here. I just really like this stuff, even if it has no value. I think it's neat to have it because, you know, people that don't really know much about it will be like, oh, wow, how do you get this? This is cool. Which you just go on eBay. <laughs> They're not really hard to find. But... It's a cool thing to show off, and uh, this is a game that I've been wanting to play and try out, so not a bad way to do it. So anyway, down to my last two things. Uh, this first one here, I was actually going to buy this at the convention that I went to earlier this month, which, by the way, check out that pickups video. That's mainly the reason why I didn't get too much this month, because I spent a lot of money there. I had a lot of really cool stuff. So I'll probably put that up in the corner now. Definitely check it out after this video. But I was going to get this there. Thankfully, the vendor that I wanted it from had more, and I was able to buy some from a flea market that he goes to, like, the week after. But anyway, comes in just a blank white box, so it doesn't really look too crazy. But inside, we have the Nintendo 64 promo camera, which is really cool. Now, these things aren't super rare or anything. I just really like these promo items. I think they're really neat. This is obviously some dollar store camera that they just slapped a logo on it feels like nothing but i mean i think it would be really cool to buy some film for this take it to some cons and just take pictures uh, i've always liked doing stuff like that i've been actually planning on doing something like that where i take a camera to to a show and just you know take pictures of stuff with the sega digio camera which is this digital camera that was originally planned to be compatible with like some saturn hardware i believe in japan they got like some software a printer stuff like that that you could plug plug in and connect and use to like edit your pictures in america we didn't get any of that so I ended up getting one of those a couple months ago. I think it would be pretty cool to, to take that and this to some cons and just, you know, snap some pictures of cool things I see there. Thankfully, from looking into it, the film for this camera is pretty standard. It doesn't use anything too crazy. So I just have to go find some, which shouldn't be that bad. I think it said Five Below has it. So, I mean, I could go pretty much anywhere and uh, get some film. All right, and this final item is kind of not really new although in a way it is so if you saw my pickups video from retro game con which like i said it'll be linked up in the corner somewhere 
If you saw that video, you would have seen that I got a Sega CD Model 1, minus the pack-in games. But I had the manual, I had the box, I had all the inserts, and it didn't work. The seller basically said he originally attempted a repair. Um, the guy who he bought it from also attempted a repair, so I knew it wasn't going to be very easy. But I went through, I bought a cap kit, I recapped the whole thing, didn't fix it at all. So my thinking is that there's probably just something wrong with the board. Uh, potentially the capacitors leaked and it broke some traces somewhere. Uh, apparently there are replacement boards you can get, but that's way beyond my skill level. So I'm just going to hold on to the thing until <laughs> until I can get to that point. But anyway, in the meantime, uh, I, I recapped everything and I was able to get the power board working. Uh, the disk drive, I was able to recap and that all worked. It's just the main board. So... I ended up buying another Sega CD Model 1. This one had a bad disk drive, so went through, swapped out the parts that I needed. Uh, seller actually recapped it already, so I didn't even have to do that again. I bought a whole other kit, and I didn't even need it. Main board is all recapped. I used the power board and the disk drive from the other unit, so everything's recapped, everything is tested, everything's working, so that's awesome. Now I have one of these things fully working, which is not super common, because these are kind of notorious for being uh, super unreliable. I am missing like the little metal plate here, but I don't, I don't care. And now I can take my Model 1 Genesis and the uh, 32X on top of it and make the Tower of Power, which won't show up on camera very well. But there it is. <laughs> I would like to just get like the full setup for a Tower of Power. I really would like to get, you know, the karaoke add-on on the side. There was a modem that plugs into the back. There's like a wireless receiver that plugs into the front. Um, I could get like the Master System converter up here, a Game Genie. I just want to get the whole thing and put it on display. I think it would be really funny. Realistically, am I ever going to use this thing for an actual Sega CD? Probably not. I mean, I have the CDX that I bought in the, the previous video. I have a Model 2 that's always worked perfectly. I'm planning on getting like a Laser Active, a JVC XI, whatever. I would like to get all those. So most likely this isn't going to be the one that I use, but it's still a neat thing to have. And I still have the shell for the other one. So I technically now have two on display. Since I'm crazy and I have two Model 1 Genesis consoles, I have one with the HD graphics and one without it, I now have a Sega CD to put the other one on. I hope I'm not forgetting anything else. That's all I can remember buying, but I don't know. This month has been kind of a wild one for me. <laughs> um, you know, just with the convention, um, I did end up actually getting a new job and I got kind of a severance package for my previous job so I used a lot of that to buy a bunch of really cool stuff from Japan so like I said that's coming in a future video but unfortunately at this new job I'm not going to be making as much money as I was at my previous one so I might have to slow down a little bit with the pickups I'm going to try my best to keep it <laughs> keep it interesting for you guys but uh, at least for the time being you're probably going to be seeing a lot more common stuff you know like this and like this and whatever in the videos instead of like these crazy out there things i just mainly with this month i wanted to kind of go out with a bang i wanted to get you know all that cool stuff from the convention i wanted to buy all those things from japan that i've been kind of waiting on for a while so that video coming up is definitely going to be one to watch and uh, also, just thank you guys all for your support on these videos. About a year ago now, I think it was in January-ish, I was able to actually get my channel monetized. So I've been making a little bit of money off these videos. I also have a join button now and super chats and things like that. Not saying you guys have to, but if you guys want to help me out, um, you know, just kind of help fund some of this stuff that I, I buy to show you guys on this channel. It would be greatly appreciated. If not, just watching the videos, commenting, liking, things like that is more than enough. Yeah, anyway, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out all the links down in the description. I've got my website, my Discord, my Instagram. I just recently made an account on Blue Sky because I just do not like Twitter. So check me out on there if you guys use it. I like to post a lot of, you know, interesting finds or just cool things from my collection that I haven't quite made a full video on yet, but just kind of give like some pictures and a, a quick little explanation of what it is. 
But yeah, anyway, said if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.